Arian Moyed is a first time Emmy nominee for his performance on Succession on HBO. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Uh, Arian, first and foremost, congratulations on the Emmy nomination. Thank you so much. I am just still kind of pinching myself. I love it. Yeah, tell us how you heard the news of the nomination and how does it feel, you know, you're in your third season of Succession, um, you know, so how does it feel at this point doing the show so long, you know, to, to get that nomination? It means everything to me. I'm going to answer the latter part first, just because um, I just love that this Emmy nomination comes on the words of Jesse Armstrong, to be honest with you. I just, I am so, uh, I admire him so much as a writer and as a leader and as an artist. And so to have in any which way a nomination, which is crazy in itself, to be uh, alongside Jesse and the incredible show that is Succession is just, it's a dream. It really is. Yeah. And as I said, you've been on the show for a long time. So I just wanted to ask, you know, big picture, um, how does it feel to be on this journey with Succession for three years? You you were on in, in those very early episodes and it's just grown and grown in popularity and success. What has the journey felt like from day one to, to now? You know, it, it's hard to sum up because mostly I'm still kind of in that journey. You know what I mean? As we're, we're as we're gearing up for season four right now. And so so it's hard to like kind of like look back because you feel like you're still in the midst of it. But what I can say is that um, is that I feel that it's really just an honor to be on a show with just so many amazing artists. You know, I, I mean this, and I say this all the time, but it's true. Like even behind the screen, I mean behind the the you know the other side of the camera, what the crew is doing, what how how they're filming. We shoot on film, you know, it's like all of the things, the elements that make this happen and make it so organically. So that's the thing that I think is also very kind of beautiful about the show. There's like an organicness to how it all kind of like stumbles itself out, which why I feel it's so, you know, like such a great piece of writing because we really have no clue what the next things are going to be. Um, and it really is a great space for artists to, to really come in, you know, and just flex some muscles, come in, do a little damage and leave, you know, do a little stewy damage, get in there, tell everyone that they're idiots and go. Speaking of the writing uh, and, and Stewie in particular, what was it about that character, you know, years ago that first appealed, appealed to you to take on the project? Because he's so interesting and he's grown and changed so much over the three seasons. But take us back to that. When, when you saw that first script, what was it about the character that really drew you to the role? You know, I had I had the pleasure of reading the pilot episode and auditioning for the pilot. Um, and then I was doing The Humans, this play on Broadway uh, at the time. And then a year later go, comes around and they, they're, I'm still doing The Humans on Broadway, crazily. And I, I got this audition for Stewie. And to be honest with you, when it's, I don't know what about this type of individual um, that I think of. I just think that they must have no, they must be surrounded by shields. You know, um, it was in the midst of the, you know, just authoritarianisms here and elsewhere across the globe, just like having complete Teflon all over their bodies. And so something about that was really fascinating to me that that a guy that can jump over a counter and steal a donut and be like, I mean, what are they going to do? What what are they possibly going to do? Um, and. And so th there's a freeingness to that that I feel is really essential to Stewie and 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 also off of the heels of doing really kind of specific, you know, I, I kind of like I'm going to grossly describe like tiny work that we were doing and the, the, the humans on Broadway under the direction of Joe Mantello, like all of that, those pieces were informing also the way that I was on that set at the time. Um, and I felt a real ease at it. And also I've known Jeremy since I was 19. So there's a lot of elements that were going in there. Um, and just being relaxed. I cannot describe this. Someone, there was a meme that came out recently. I don't know who did this of like how um, he's kind of like Snoop a little bit, like Stewie has a little bit of Snoop in him. And as a, a 90s hip hop, you know, ridiculous fan, um, <laughs> I could see a little bit of Snoop in him. I was a little, a little bit of like, I don't really give a shit. Like, this is how it's going to go, uh, which is also funny because people that don't know me at all might think like, that's what I do. But it's like, I'm like 
purposefully trying to maneuver something that is very specific um, and carefree and serious and honest, really, really bluntly honest. I think all that comes out in the episode you submitted for the Emmys, uh, Retired Janitors of Idaho, such a great episode. Um, and you were in multiple episodes this season. So I just wanted to ask you, what about that one in particular stands out to you, you know, as indicative of your best work as Stewie um, in season three? I think for me, it's the, it's the maneuvering. It's the, he is, he and Kendall, when they're together, those two can maneuver and wheel and deal and make a move happen. You know, I say this all the time, but it's true. Like that bear hug letter was baller. I mean, it was just super cool. <laughs> and they almost got away with it. And so in a way, like there is a little bit of that energy that I love. And I also love that he is placed in the middle of like these, you know, the old guard of Sandy and Sandy, um, but also wanting to seal the deal. So he's also got to deal with the Waystar Royco people. So like he's constantly like maneuvering and not telling everyone um not telling, trying to make the deal happen, really. Really, his interest is in making that deal happen. So I, th I just feel like those instincts, and you know, um, you know, belligerent zucchini is just fun. That's a fun thing to say. That's and exactly what I, yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you next, because your sense of humor and Stewie's sense of humor is always so sharp on the show. And I feel like in this episode in particular, because it's it's so farcical, um, it's just, it's so great. It's one of my favorite episodes of the season. So what is it like for you, who's always funny? I mean, Stewie's always very wry and, and hilarious, <laughs> but to be in an episode that really leans into the farce, um, does that feel different or, you know, how fun is that for you to play, you know, a, a, maybe a different tone um, than, than usual? I think what is amazing about the process, David, is actually that um, we're not kind of told what style these scenes are. We're kind of just going in there and really kind of forcing our version of what true might be in there. And because the circumstances are so insane <laughs> that it feels like they layer in. You know, I, I remember this in season one when we were in in England shooting the wedding scenes, that wedding episodes. I remember thinking, are people gonna get like that this lives in some sort of no man's land of everything, you know what I mean? It's like constantly battling at night. So when you say farcical, I, I, I know exactly what you mean, but it's also, you can't also play into it. You just have to play into the truth. And then all of a sudden, cause the words are so almost Shakespearean that it turns into these like, you know, clownish moments of just let's get the, the deal done. Angriest fucking vegetable. <laughs> I want to I want to ask you about a few of the cast members you've mentioned. Um, first, Jeremy Strong, who you've worked with, you know, very closely over these three seasons. What is it like working with him as Kendall? The, because the the dynamic is so complex. Because they're old friends, they're allies. They become kind of you know on opposite side the uh, sides of the table at multiple points throughout the series. So, what is it like exploring that kind of complex relationship with him um, on screen? It's 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 fascinating to be honest with you because we've known each other from a very young age, which means that 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 there's history there. Um, I've also known Jeremy from a very young age, weirdly, um, and and also we are as different actors. You know, we're completely different styles of acting. I mean, Jeremy takes the work so seriously and so deeply. I mean, he has so much depth in his work that is just. It's really kind of amazing. Um, and I am I am also just trying to relax in the space. And sometimes those energies are different energies, but that's kind of what you're witnessing, isn't it? I mean, isn't that what the, the energy is? He is always, Kendall is always trying to grab at something, you know. You know, when we were doing in that episode, um, you know, we didn't, I didn't, we didn't rehearse that day to do the scene where Kendall and I are coming into the room. And and because of COVID and all this other stuff, I don't remember exactly, David, but I kind of vaguely remember that 
for some odd reason, this was shot first, even though I haven't shot my the, the car scene. And so, so it was like, I don't remember exactly how that all went. So this was the first time I think that Kendall and I were going to have a scene together. And we didn't rehearse. And we walk into the room. And then all of a sudden, you're basically seeing the kind of like what the interaction of these two different, you know, energies are going to look like. Um, and so what's kind of remarkable is, is that it's like documented in a very, I feel like real way um so that's kind of cool um and also and again it's it's um you know i am i am a um, I, I come in when stewie comes in throws his weight down and then leaves you know i'm not holding down the fort like some of these other folks are and and the pressures of all that is does not does not um i mean i take that very seriously i mean for them <laughs> you know it's a lot of hours a lot of hours yeah, let's talk about, um, speaking of different character energies in the episode, this season introduces Hope Davis to your oh. your team as Sandy, um, as the other Sandy's kind of sidelined and ailing. Um, what is that like to introduce her into this dynamic, especially with you and Kendall? How does that kind of change how you play scenes? Um, you know, the, the three of you and, and Larry Pine too, when the scenes he's in, you know, it's, it's just such a unique character to kind of add in. So how does that change, you know, how, how you guys all play together? I think it's again back to the what the evidence of the writing is to be blunt with you because in the last episode it's not like Sandy with an eye and Stewie are on the same page do you know what I mean um it there is he is playing what he said that he was going to do from the jump I will back whoever wins this thing like I don't I have no alliance to anyone but the power of winning and so so if what's cool is and that's what's cool about what, what Jesse and the team and the writing team has done is that the nuance inside of all of those, those relationships don't fly one way or another. So it's also battling Sandy in a way, you know, um, we're not on the same team. We are playing against her. We are, and she is playing against us by going with Shiv. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like a lot of these dynamics are kind of like playing with each other. Um, and I think what's fun is that Stewie needs to maneuver and w when we have to see him maneuver both angles to make sure that everyone's happy. Yeah, let's, let's talk about kind of big picture on the season and go back to your first, you, you mentioned earlier that car scene in the second episode. Um, I would have loved to have seen Stewie, uh, his reaction to Kendall's press conference. He, he calls it, you know, the greatest, a ticket to the greatest freak show watching him do it. How do you think in that moment, if Stewie caught that live, how do you think Stewie was reacting to what what Kendall was doing on live television? I would have loved to have seen seen that moment play out. Great question. I mean, to be blunt with you, I think he would have started calculating what the moves are. I think he's immediately playing chess pieces four steps ahead. Um, because moments prior, I said, we're going to win just a little bit more than you are. And until that switch is over, you know, um, so I think that's one thing. The other thing that I, that I think that Stewie has to maintain and, and why the Trojan horse was thrown in and why all that stuff is because I think Stewie also has to realize this is a man that has wronged him in the past as well. This is a guy that we, you know, we had the whole world in our hands at one point, he says, and then you just walked away. So he's also maneuvering that energy as well and seeing how, so you know, Kendall has the, as we have seen often, has the ability to, you know, self uh, explode in a way. And Stewie's also playing that energy as well. Um, but again, he comes in trying to make a deal. Stewie brings him in and says, here is, so if now this is in play and if what the, the paperwork that you do have, so he's constantly playing the game, you know, he's, you know, um, like everyone else trying to be top dog. Something else I can't wait to see too is how Stewie reacts to the news that Logan is selling the company to Gojo. We see that he's excited about acquiring Gojo, even though mm. they were not brought in until you know late late Last into the yeah. negotiations. But um, you know we don't know how any of these other characters are going to react because we're just seeing in the season finale the family reacting to that news in real time. Um, how do you think Stewie would feel about? a sale to go to Gojo rather than an acquisition of them. I mean, at that moment when he hears that, he, that you know, that that the acquisition has happened again, we can only just go to the evidence. I mean, and the evidence of the the eighth episode or something like that um, 
is the fact that he is not totally opposed to Matson because Matson brings in a bunch of young, hip, crazy, whatever that kind of energy is. So again, in that scene as well, the evidence is kind of a little bit like, well, he's not opposed to that because I think Logan says, well, if you hate the deal, just then drop it, kill it. And, and then I say, well, we didn't say that um, <laughs> because there is something valuable there. Um, um, and the game of risk sometimes like, you know, in business is just kind of like in like, you know, world domination is like break up a lot of things so maybe some of that energy so who knows you know like i think that he is game to kind of move forward with whoever's going to win um and and i think he yeah i wonder if he's going to get wooed you got to work with a lot of um the ensemble this this season in this uh in the in the episode you submitted uh retired janitors is there any other cast members though that you haven't had a chance to work with a lot that you would love to kind of see interact with Stewie more uh, in season four and beyond? Because, you know, the the ensemble is so large and so rich. So who are you just dying to, you know, work more I with? I mean, I would love just one scene with Cousin Greg. Just one of the two of them and them kind of, you know, dig, you know, like enjoying each other's company. I think they would actually get along. You know what I mean? Um, so I would love a Cousin Greg scene. I would honestly with any human actor on everyone is on there um um seriously everyone kieran i do more scenes with kieran um yeah i don't know who i mean jerry i would love scenes with jerry it's doing scenes with jerry is so much fun uh and finally um i know succession is back in production i'm sure there's not much if anything you can uh share with <laughs> us so i'll just ask you know, what do you hope to see uh, for Stewie moving forward in season four? Where do you hope the character is going or what facets of the character do you hope to explore, um, you know, in the, in the next season? You know, I, I hope that he continues to like drop bombs um, and come in and really kind of tell everyone what's up <laughs> and also kind of go in a little bit and just try to, um, you know, see how he can be top dog, you know? Um, you know, it's hard, it's hard to just, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, I think, yeah, and always being honest, you know, and always being honest. I'm keeping Arian. it as big as possible, as you can obviously see. <laughs> that's okay. We'll, we'll see soon enough, uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Arian Moyed, congratulations again on the Emmy nomination. Thanks so much, Thanks so much for talking to Gold Derby. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.